right, well, let's jump in, guys. Last, last time I got to, they let me preach up here, I went for like an hour and 20 minutes. So now you guys kept clapping. And I get, I get lost in it, you know what I mean? I just like to preach, so you got to stop, just, just stop, just, just tone it down after about 45 minutes, okay? That'll, that'll, uh, that'll signal me. Um, Junior hates this, but I want to lift up my wonderful son, Junior. Uh, this week he competed for the first time in, uh, as a rock wall yellow jacket uh, wrestling, uh, in his first wrestling uh, competition. And, uh, but I was super proud of him. I mean, man, from the time he was five years old, we had him in jujitsu. And he's such a kind hearted dude that he never really wanted to hurt anyone. You know what I mean? You know these kids, it's like, it's like, okay, this is fighting class. We want you to win, okay? Be aggressive. Like, okay, Dad. And he never did. He just, he was always kind to all the kids. He's like, I didn't want to hurt him, and I didn't want to discourage him, and you know what I mean? Nah, nah, nah. But, but I know he was learning, because, man, he went on there. This was his first ever wrestling competition. And he was dominant on that mat. I mean, it was incredible. He was shoving people around. They, because he's so big, they, they just do it by age. So he had to fight. He's a junior. He had to fight a senior. And he was very dominant. The, the only thing he, like none of us understood is the rules. Like, oh, 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 don't touch your hands together. So he had this kid, and he was like holding him like this. Can't do that. Can't, that's locking hands. So then, we, then he does this, locking hands. You can't even touch hands. So he lost a lot of points for like technicalities like that, but we printed off the rules, let me tell you. And it's gonna, get, it's gonna be real different next time. So very proud of you, Junior. And, uh, and then uh, my wonderful son, David, as well. Great to be here with David, who's, uh, you know what I, what I love about David? David is the kid in our family who's like, can we have family time? Hey, Dad, when, when can we study the Bible again next time? I'm like, dang, you make me feel terrible. I'm a bad father. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I love you, David. And thank you for being so pure-hearted. Um, okay, today we're jumping into the book of Acts. Now, why is the book of Acts important? Why? Our church, we do, we break down the book of Acts into four parts every year. Do we do that with any other book of the Bible? No, we don't. So why do we do the book of Acts? It's the foundation, interesting. It's the example, so it's the story of the first church. So you would think as a church that that would be kind of important to us, right? What else? The beginning of the new covenant or new testament or new contract or new deal. People get caught up with like testaments and stuff like that. It's just, it's just not a word we use anymore. You don't walk up and rent a U-Haul and write a testament. You know what I mean? But, but you, you sign a deal or a contract. That's, that's what the new testament is. It's the new deal. Between God and man. Uh, we'll see that. What else? Oh, so, so the book of Acts is the library card of the entire New Testament. So when you, when you read through the book of Acts, you're like, oh, there's Paul in Corinth. That's when 1 Corinthians must have been written. Okay, now he leaves Corinth. And then he writes a letter back to them. Okay, but now he's in Thessalonica. Oh, okay, so this is where that letter would have come in. And if you wanted to, you could have a lot of fun. Do it over the holidays. Is you could read through the book of Acts, and what would you find? That every other book in the New Testament, except Revelation, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, um, Hebrews, is all written in the book of Acts. Period and would be very beneficial for you to, to know that, and it really helps bring those books to life in a great way, right? Who, whoever saw the movie The Matrix? 
Who didn't see the movie The Matrix? Just point at them. Make them, make them feel weird. Just... Just, just look at them. You know how we do. Just okay. So go home and watch The Matrix for family time. Okay. I don't think there's very many dicey bits, but you, you know, always whenever you're gonna watch a, a movie, just keep the somebody responsible needs to keep the, the remote in hand. But um, so in the in the movie The Matrix, this guy Neo feels like something is wrong, and then what happens? Something is wrong. He has to, he meets a guy for a Bible study, right? It's like, hey, you got to meet, you got to meet our Bible talk leader, Morpheus. And so he gets a choice, right? Red pill or blue pill, okay? And then what? He studies the Bible, and then he wakes up and he realizes that he's in the and he's a battery. He's just, just charging this, this machine. Are you with me? Okay. Then what happens? Then, he, then the, the, the machine unplugs him. You guys know, the, uh, you guys know um, the story from Salisbury Hill, the song Salisbury Hill? Peter Gabriel? I'm going to sing it right now. I'm just kidding. Salisbury Hill... I can see the city lights. I'm going to do a spoken word stuff. So he writes this story about how, I don't know if he became a Christian or not, but, but nevertheless, he wrote uh, these beautiful lyrics about his experience as he was uh, studying the Bible and converted to Christianity, whatever that means. But um, he says... He, he writes this, I did not believe the information, just had to trust imagination. My heart going boom, boom, boom. Son, he said, grab your things, I've come to take you home. To keep in silence, I resign. So he, he, he's been going to church and reading the Bible, but he doesn't want to tell anybody. My friends would think I was a nut. Turning water into wine. Open doors would soon be shut. He knew he'd be rejected by the world. So I went from day to day, though my life was in a rut. Till I thought of what I'd say, which connection I should cut. I was feeling like part of the scenery. I walked right out of the machinery. My heart going boom, boom, boom. Hey, he said, grab your things. I've come to take you home. And it's, uh, it's, it's Peter Gabriel talking about how he realized that once he told people he was a Christian, that everybody was going to treat him differently. And so similarly in the Matrix, you got to keep up with me here, okay? Similarly in the Matrix, that spider thing comes along and unplugs him, right? Then he got woke, in a sense, in our modern uh, vernacular, okay? So then he's rejected, and he goes down this thing, and he splashes into the water. baptism. Then three lights appear over him, right? And Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And then the arm comes down and grabs him, and he ends up in the ship with the scripture, the church. And he meets a bunch of weird people. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Aiden. We're all weird, okay? Bad things, you know, like, and, and, the, and our weirdness as Christians, some people come to church and they're like, man, everybody in that church is weird. If we weren't weird, we would, we would still be in the world. So the, the weirdnesses we have and the struggles we have and the pain we all have, which, newsflash, everybody has. <laughs> so the only people who don't have that are really 
they haven't decided to stop hiding it yet, but um, is why we're here. And then he gets to eat the, the, the gross food. Are you guys with me? And when you become a Christian, you start working on your budget and you start eating gross food. So, so the matrix is really a beautiful description because then he trains first principles, right? Or follow-up studies. And then, and then he learns that he can free other people, evangelism, right? And then he learns that in his case, he's sort of like, Neo is like Jesus, right? So he goes away. He leaves, but he leaves everybody behind freed in order to fight this war. Are you with me? It was an incredible movie. Who was a Christian around that time? Do you remember how many illustrations there were? It was crazy. Every minister, every Sunday getting up. And then Neo, you know, and this, the spaceship. And uh, it was like, oh my gosh, stop. I'll, I'll take a dog analogy. Any analogy. Just no more Matrix. But um, Neo... In, a, in an amazing way, this, that was the story of the Gospels. Are you with me? Okay. Then the movie made so much money that Hollywood gets involved and committees get involved and investors get involved and ba 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 ba. And so then The Matrix 2 comes out, which we were so excited about. And it was horrible. I'm like, you guys didn't even understand your own movie. It was like, the, the, it starts off with a horrible rave, and it's like very worldly, and that was supposed to be like Zion. Like, oh, guys, you didn't, you didn't even understand your, your own movie. But what they should have done is once you finish the Gospels, what should they have gone to? The book of Acts. If they had just used the book of Acts as a template, Jesus goes up into heaven. That's where Jesus should be. We, we now worship the resurrected Jesus. So you don't, you don't pray to Jesus, the baby in the manger. You don't pray to Jesus, the 33-year-old kind of young preacher who's getting harassed by the Pharisees. You're not even pray, pray, praying to Jesus on the cross. Jesus now is in heaven. Amen. And we, we've described him before. But white as white as, hair as white as wool. Feet like burnished bronze. This is, this is the cur eyes like, like blazing fire. A, a knife coming out of his mouth. This is the current Jesus that when you wake up in the morning, that's who you pray to. Are you with me? Now, that's beautiful. Why? Because it... It also opens everything up to what are the humans going to now do with this information? Are you with me? Yeah. So when they brought Neo back in the second movie, that wasn't a good thing. Ne that Neo's spirit should have been moving things. But, but then now it comes down to God in the real Matrix movie really saved your soul. And now, guess what? God... Jesus is in heaven. He moves through his spirit. But what does he want? He wants us to be like him and us to fight. Are you with me? Now, if this is boring to you, okay, which is possible, okay, maybe you've zoned out already. But if this is, if this is boring to you, that's a, a dangerous hardness of heart. It's a dangerous hardness of heart. Somewhere you forgot how much you've been forgiven. Are you with me? Christianity in general is very boring. Church is boring. Singing songs is boring every Sunday. If you forgot what it's about. Are you with me? I grew up, we went to church every Sunday. I hated it. I was an altar boy. I hated it. Are you with me? Then I become a true disciple 
I find out that the church is, uh, this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler if you're studying the Bible, it's the kingdom of God. We're in a war against darkness. I, I, I get it now. I'm in college. I'm reading this. I'm like, oh, the church is the most interesting thing in the world. And I've dedicated the past two decades of my life to strengthening and advancing the kingdom of God. And I'm like a red-blooded guy. I like science fiction movies and stuff like that. Nothing is more interesting to me or more exciting to me than the church. It's so exciting because this is the refugee camp in this world. Jesus is the resurrected Jesus. His spirit is here among us, prompting us. But really, it, it really comes down to what are you going to do? What, what does Satan want to do? Satan wants to discourage you. Satan wants to make this boring. Satan wants to make you think about this person who hurt you or this situation or la, 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 la. And, 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 and that's, that's all he can do to stop the advancement of the church. And that's why we read the book of Acts all the way through every single year to keep that spark and that fire of excitement Man, we've been forgiven, but we're not all standing around waiting to see what Jesus is going to do next. He's not in this. He, he's in this movie. He's prompted us. He's taught us. He's told us what to do. Now, what Jesus is doing is expecting us to do something about it with this information. Are you guys with me? Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 1. In my former book, Theophilus, there's already a lot there. So what was the former book? The book of Luke, Matrix 1. Theophilius. Who's Theophilius? Friend. Theo means what? God. Philius means what? Lover. Love. In love with. So this is someone who's in love with God. Who is Theophilius? Us. Everybody who's going to read this, this is a code word for... You, personally. It's also, many people think that the, the book of Acts was prompted because, um, uh, because Paul was in prison, about to get his head cut off. And so his friend Luke writes an orderly account to present to the court so to save his friend's life because he was being accused of a whole bunch of stupid things. Are you with me? In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up into heaven. After giving instructions to the Holy Spirit, to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. So we're, we're very lucky to have an incredible administrator, Scott Burley. Okay? Let's give it up for Scott. Does a great job. Okay, so Scott, let's imagine we want to start a religion and make a bunch of money, okay? So, unfortunately, Scott, you have to die. Okay. So, but, but we don't really kill him. We just fake it. Okay? And then we bring Scott back, and for 40 days we parade him around, and look, Scott's alive again. Yay! And then we send him up to heaven, which maybe is Hawaii. I don't know. Okay. We can't, we can't send Scott to Hawaii. Um, now, um, you would agree with me that um, there would be some contemporary witnesses. This is an academic term. So the New York Times, if this got really out of hand, the New York Times would go, he didn't really die. We examined the video. This is false. And then here's him getting off the plane in Hawaii. Da, 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 da. This is a hoax. New York Times would say that. Washington Post would say that. The Guardian would say that. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Okay. So... What do the contemporary witnesses, the hostile, non-Christian contemporary witnesses at the time of Jesus say? 
like the Babylonian Talmud. You can go Google this while you're home. They say he did all the miracles. He was resurrected. It was by the power of Satan. So it's very interesting that today you have these people, oh, Jesus never existed. The contemporary, hostile, non-Christian witnesses don't say that. <laughs> they believe he did miracles. <laughs> Is that interesting? So Google this, Google this at home. Now, if it turned out that we, that we go, okay, well, guys, we can't find Scott. Where is Scott? Now, maybe he's on Kona. We don't know. But, but we can't find Scott. And then Kenneth gets up and says, I saw Gavin kill him. Okay? Now, Gavin, with one eyewitness, goes to court. What would happen? He's done. What about 12 eyewitnesses? What about 120 eyewitnesses? What if those 120 eyewitnesses were ready to die for what they believe? What if, in fact, they do die for what they believe? That's what you call empirical evidence. That's what you call evidence. There's, there are many people on death row right now who are there for far less evidence. Are you with me? So, so what, we're, what we just read there is incredible. Now, the Bible, the beauty of the Bible, is that it has been attacked and assailed and slandered and studied and ripped apart from word one to the final word in many religious programs and theological seminaries who supposedly like believe in God throughout the entire world. And what has been found? It is unassailable. It's unassailable. So what does now Hollywood and the world do? They've learned a very important lesson. Ignore it. Don't fight it. Don't mention it. Don't bring it up. Because it's right. The only way to fight Christianity is to stop talking about it. If you say anything, we, that gives us an opportunity to start talking and showing you the evidences. And oh, 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 now we have a problem. So what have they learned? Don't talk about it. What, what does that make us want to do? Talk about about it even more. This is, guys, the most relevant and important thing that we could talk about. This is the most relevant and important thing that has ever happened on the face of the earth. It really happened. It doesn't think it didn't happen. Jesus never said, I'm a philosopher. Jesus doesn't provide us any wonderful philosophical thoughts. There's, Jesus does not provide us any power thoughts to, to help encourage you have your wonderful day. That, that, he said, I am the living God. Before Abraham was, I am. So either he is who he says he is or he's crazy. The contemporary witnesses say that he wasn't crazy. And nor was the church crazy. And this was a people... You know, if you really study out the, the, the Greco-Roman culture of the time, they were into truth. They would have studied, they would have researched, they would have investigated, and they would have claimed Jesus never existed if that was the case. That was certainly not the case. And for us as disciples, knowing how much we've been forgiven... Knowing that Jesus has gone up into heaven, knowing that this is a model for what they did, this is exciting for us because it tells us what we need to do with our lives. Are you guys with me? Jesus, it's very interesting. <laughs> He's, in verse 9, he tells them, hey, when you see me come back down again, this is the big one. Okay, so, so you're, you're going to watch me go up. When I come back, 
It's not for a picnic. When I come back, it's for Judgment Day. And it's going to be real. And there will be the end of sin, the end of evil, the end of pain. I will, all, everything bad is going to get destroyed. I'm going to wipe away every tear from your eye. This is going to be it. Are you with me? After he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. So they're watching Jesus. He literally rises up and disappears into the sky. They were looking up intently into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. So they're watching Jesus. And then they go, whoa, whoa, there's two angels there. Like, like Ron and his dad. <laughs> they said, why are you standing there looking up into the sky? The angels have a sense of humor. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you can't tell me that's not a little bit of comedy relief. Why are you looking up into the sky? Because Jesus just levitated up into the sky. Could that, could that possibly be one of the reasons? This same Jesus who has taken who has been taken from you into heaven will come back the same way you have seen him go up into heaven. The angels are already there prompting. Guys, you have work to do. So the apostles go and they gather the church together in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 1. And the day of Pentecost comes and they're all together in one place. So all the believers, 120, the apostles plus the women, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind comes from heaven and fills the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, what does the Bible say? You will see the kingdom of God come with power. Okay? So now, here we are. We're all, you know, praying. Jesus has died. He came back and he, he taught us some stuff for 40 days, so we're stronger. You know what I mean? We're doing, we're doing okay spiritually. But suddenly you see a fire over Joali's head. You're like, whoa, Joali, her hair's on fire. Somebody help her. And then it spreads. Ryan Kitty, Cindy, fire. And, and the fire, would you say that's a powerful experience? Yet nobody's burning. Scott, get down. She's like, no, no, stop. It's from God. It's the Holy Spirit. Fire burning on everybody's heads. Are you guys with me? Then we hear the violent blowing, like, like a plane about to hit the building. Would that get your attention? Everybody, where's the exits? Trampling, trampling over Paul. Ah, get out of the way, Paul. Ah, everybody's running. The Spirit of God is bringing the kingdom of God, and it is now coming with power. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Alors c'est comme le prédicateur a commencé à parler en français. He has changed the language, but everybody can still understand in their language. So, so some people are hearing French and Spanish, and but but everybody can understand. Are you guys with me? So the Spanish visitor who can't speak any English, it's like you understand. See, si. <laughs> and the the French visitor, it's like, est-ce que tu peux comprendre? Oui, je comprends. It's, it's, oh. it's an incredible, it's incredible. What does the Bible say? All nations will come together in Jerusalem. Prophecy number two accomplished. Then Peter stood up, verse 14, with the 11, raised his voice 
and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Prophecy number three. The word of God will go out from Jerusalem. Now, three, three prophecies accomplished in like this much Bible? That's a little trippy, right? Some mathematicians did the, did the math to see how many, all the prophecies that are accomplished in Acts chapter 2 is not accomplished in any other scripture in the entire Bible and is mathematically impossible that it's a fluke. Is that incredible or what? Peter stands up and what does he say to the people? He says, therefore, let all Israel be assured of this, verse 36. God has made this Jesus who you crucified, both Lord and Messiah, which I believe is what Brian has chosen as the title for our winter workshop. Lord and Messiah. So what does Lord mean? Boss. What does Messiah mean? Savior. See, everybody wants to choose one. Like, I like Jesus the boss. My Jesus is harsh. He, like, tells everybody what's up. No, no, no. I like Jesus the Messiah. I like cuddly Jesus. Jesus doesn't, isn't, isn't one or the other. He's, bull, he's like a grizzly bear. He can be cuddly or ferocious at the same time. He, he's just one bear. Are you guys with me? When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. You know, one of the most dangerous things is when you've not been cut to the heart in a while. You know what I mean? Sin doesn't bother you, but being corrected bothers you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you sin, but you can easily forgive yourself. But being corrected about it, that takes you off. Oopsies. That's, that's a hard heart. These people were cut to the heart. That's how we're supposed to feel when we read the Bible. We're supposed to be like, man, I don't even deserve this. This is crazy. And they said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Okay, so here you have the first group. This is post-resurrection. Yes? Because a lot of people talk about the thief on the cross. Jesus had not died yet. <laughs> there was no forgiveness of... Jesus had not paid for the forgiveness of sins yet. So he was still alive. What does the Bible say in Hebrews 9? No, no covenant can come into effect until someone dies. Are you guys with me? So we know that when he was talking to the thief on the cross, there was no new covenant yet. He forgave him, but where was the power going to come from? The death, burial, and resurrection, which had not yet happened. Are you guys with me? These guys hear this. It's now the new, it's the beginning of the new covenant, the new testament, the new contract, the new deal, the new arrangement between God and man. This is big time information. I'm getting tingles. Like, I don't know about you guys. This is giving me, like, goosebumps. Just making the hair on the top of my head just stand up. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can make it out. He goes, brothers, what should we do? So this is the leader of the New Testament church, an apostle, Peter, Jesus says, Peter, you are going to be the one to open the gates of the kingdom of heaven. This is all one chapter, just, just prophecy after prophecy accomplished. Okay? Peter replied. So remember, this is a group of non-Christians asking the leader of the apostles, what should he do? Okay? Now, Winston Churchill had a saying. He said, the average man trips over the truth gets up, dusts himself off, and tries to forget that it ever happened. Are you with me? So you're going to trip over some big-time truth here right now. Like, incredibly important truth. The truth you're about to hear right now from the Scriptures, not me, 
is, is some of the most important information humans can know about. Are you with me? And on Judgment Day, you'll be reminded that you were told. Okay? So you have to decide what you're going to do with this information. Okay? What does the Bible say? They heard that Jesus was crucified. They heard that he was Lord and Messiah. They were brokenhearted. They said, what do we do with this information? So we live in the information age where we see tons of information. And what do we do with it? Nothing. <laughs> right? We, in fact... I cannot tell you, I drove here, I saw 50 advertisements on the way here. I cannot tell you what a single one of them says. Because my brain is designed to now stop looking at information. The older generation, who's part of the older generation here? We got, okay, a few of the older generation here, okay? They were trained, well, you can't put your hand down. Okay, um, we're one of the younger brothers. Um, <laughs> the older generation, like Judy's generation and the other Judy's generation, they took on information, and Bob and Paul and the, and the other wonderful brothers, okay? okay and, and, the, and, the, and Grandpa Harding. They took in information and decided if it was right or wrong. Isn't that trippy? See, we just look at information and it's all relative. Okay, so, so don't do that for the next 10 minutes, okay? Peter replied, repent. So you don't need to agree with it or don't agree with it. I don't care what your other pastor told you. Who cares? Well, you don't have to repent. Jesus' love is... Da, da, da. We don't care what he thinks right now, just for the next 10 minutes, okay? Repent. So you have to repent, when you get this information. Are you with me? You can't keep going on after finding out that your actions killed someone's son and they're forgiving you and you're going to go to heaven and start and think that you can keep doing what you were doing before. Are you with me? So you have to repent. That makes sense, right? Repent and be baptized. From the baptismo, which means going underwater. Not sprinkling, not a little bit of moisture. Actual underwater type baptism. It comes from a naval term, which is when a ship is completely submerged under the water. Are you guys with me? Okay. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. So everyone... Jesus is Lord and Messiah, everyone who hears that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, we don't just go, wow, that's a, wow, that's a nice thought. Amen. Let me keep going with doing what I was doing. You guys know the song from Usher? Guess I better keep on doing my thing. This is my confession. So he, does, he, he confesses all his sin, right? And then at the end, it's like, guess I better keep on doing my thing. No, Usher. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't, don't, don't keep on doing your thing. <laughs> it's not helping. <laughs> it's not good for you. It's not good for your whole family, okay? Okay. So, so what does he say? Keep on doing your thing. No. Repent and be baptized every one of you. So what? I know we don't like everyone because we're democratic, right? So we like, like, you know, you're going to have 10% of people who don't agree pretty much to anything. But what does every one of you mean? Everybody. It means, it means everybody. And when people say not everybody, we call cap. Okay? 
you didn't think I was a cool preacher. <laughs> with my plaid tie and my, my... You didn't think a guy with a plaid tie, bald guy with a beard with a plaid tie and a tweed jacket knows cool stuff. Oops. Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you. Someone tell me what time it is. How, where, how long have I been going? Huh? 40 minutes? Okay, I'm gonna, I've been going 50 minutes? Dang. All right. This could have been a disaster. I, I'm like, I'm loving this right now. Okay. <clears throat> repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? The forgiveness of your sins. This is the whole kit and caboodle. There's nothing else that matters. This is what the whole Bible is leading up to, is the forgiveness of our sins. And, there's an and. Who needs an and after that? And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Is that incredible? That Holy Spirit was what Samson had. The Holy Spirit is what the prophets had. Holy Spirit is what Jesus had. The Holy Spirit is what David had. We all get it? The promise is for you and your children, not immediately. They never baptized any babies. Okay? And for all who are far off, including all of us, for all who the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. What does that constitute? So you have 3,000 people plus the 120 coming up out of the waters. We're all on the other side now. We're singing some songs. We're hugging, bro, sis. We're forgiven of our sins. We have the Holy Spirit. What do you call that? The church. What just happened? You just got the first church. The beginning of the church, the beginning of an alien invasion of earth by God. A liberation of the planet earth and a beginning of the only revolution that's ever going to matter. Because it's the revolution that forgives us, forgives us of our sins. Are you guys with me? You know, so many other incredible things happen. Peter gets persecuted, gets thrown into jail. One guy shows up, Ananias and his wife Sapphira. They show up, they sell their house, but they want glory in front of the church. So they sell their house. They keep part of it to the side because they want to take a little holiday, okay? They want to be on the uh, Maui mission. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But they want to take, take a little holiday. Fair enough. That was their money. They could have done whatever they wanted. But they wanted the glory as if they'd given the whole money to the church. What happens? Paul kills him. God. Paul just kind of like indicated it. He dies. Wife comes in, lies to the church. Dies. What is God doing? God is saying, don't mess with the church. The church is serious. It's the kingdom of God. Now, you can tell a fib in here and you might not die, but you won't make it to heaven if you don't repent. Are you guys with me? Everybody gives over their possessions. So many people start coming that they actually have to choose some servants to like, like be in charge of like the feeding of people. Because there's so many people coming. And then they even persecute those guys. And Stephen, who's one of those guys, becomes the first martyr. A persecution breaks out, and, and they, they go, oh, I got the solution to Christianity. Spread them all over the Roman world. Let's take all the Christians and just like take like a bunch, like a bunch of dandelions in our hand and just blow them all over the, the, the lawn. That'll solve it. <sighs> Churches everywhere. But here's an, here's an incredible scripture. In, uh, 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 it says... Um, just in verse 4 of chapter 8, it says, And those who have been scattered preached the word wherever they went. These guys who were scattered went and preached the word wherever they went. Then this dude who was a persecutor named Saul, 
He gets confronted by Jesus. He converts to Christianity, becomes the apostle Paul, which is incredible, right? Then some guys start converting some Gentiles because for the first seven years you had to be Jewish to get converted. They didn't really fully understand it. They were still learning. What happens then? Some people in Antioch start converting Gentiles. The Gentiles get converted. Paul goes up there. Barnabas, who is, you know, Saul wasn't really trusted by everybody since he was a former persecutor. So this guy, Barnabas, comes along and decides to become his friend. They go around preaching, converting many people, especially Greeks, to Christianity. This starts a great and terrible controversy. It separates the church, and we will pick up that story next week. I love you guys very much.